Right now on iNaturalist, we are having our Fall Fungi Blitz 2021 project to submit mushroom ID observations until November 15th. Whether you're a part of the project or maybe seeing this video at a later date, perhaps you're looking for some tips to help you in your mushroom identification. At the Ecology Lab, we have various mushroom ID guides available for you to use. Some of these may list spore print color in the identification key or might include it as a characteristic in the information about the mushroom. Either way, spore prints are a very useful tool to help you in identifying your mushroom. So spores are microscopic reproductive cells usually found in the gills or pores of a mushroom and they range in color. By making a spore print, you're letting the spores drop onto a piece of paper so that you can see what color they are without using a microscope. So let's go out and find a mushroom to identify. Here's a list of things you'll need. To collect the mushroom, we'll need gloves, a knife, a hand trowel if you're taking the mushroom out of the ground, a wrap such as wax paper, and a bag. And for making the actual spore print, we'll need gloves, a piece of paper, a glass container, some water, a pencil, and a pipette if you have one. All right, so here's the mushroom I'm choosing to identify. And it's important to take a moment to look at the habitat your mushroom is growing in before we get started, because these features will be important for identification. So if your mushroom is growing out of the ground, take a look at what kind of substrate it's growing in. In our case, it's growing out of wood. So we want to know, is this a live tree or is this decaying wood? And what type of tree is it? You can use a Trees in Canada book from the Ecology Lab to help you identify the tree species. As you can see in our case, our mushroom is growing out of the stump of a fallen sugar maple tree. So since we're using the spore print for mushroom identification, we don't yet know what type of mushroom this is and whether it's poisonous or not. So as a precaution, you should always wear gloves when harvesting an unknown mushroom. In the case that it is poisonous and you don't want to um, contaminate your hands. So I'm just going to use a knife to help me gently take off one of these mushrooms. So I'm just going to wrap that so that the spores stay intact and also to seal it so if it is poisonous the spores don't go elsewhere and just put that in a bag to take back with us to make the spore print make a note of how the gills attach the stem before we cut the stem off to make our spore print because that's also an important id feature and we're going to cut the stem off so that the cap can lay flat on the paper. Mushrooms have various ways of releasing spores, so make sure wherever the spores are being released from is facing down on the paper. And most commonly, that would be the underside of the mushroom with pores or gills. The spore print can range in colors from light to dark, so you might have to use different colors of paper so that it shows up. Next, we're just adding a couple drops of water, and this simulates rain or dew, which can help the mushroom release its spores. Then I'm writing down the date and time that I took the spore print at because we're going to leave it for 24 hours to sit. Then just cover it with a glass container so that it's not disrupted by the airflow, and we'll be back in 24 hours. It's been 24 hours, so we can now lift up the container and the mushroom cap to see the spore print. And this mushroom is a type of inky cap, so you can see it has dropped a considerable amount with the print. And we're going to write down the color that we see, keeping in mind that it can be subjective. And spore color is only one of the many characteristics used to ID mushrooms. So thank you so much for watching, and have fun making your spore print!